Welcome to this introduction to the Compact Flash for Apple 3000 card, otherwise known as the CFFA 3000. This video will demonstrate how to use this very modern bit of hardware in a very retro situation, an Apple II computer. Physical hard drives are slow, noisy, failure prone, and drive technology has pulled way out ahead of the Apple II's realm. Small, working, SCSI drives are just hard to get anymore. The most common use for a CFFA 3000 card and its predecessors is to use it as a virtual hard drive. New for the CFFA 3000 is the ability to host virtual hard drives not only as rigid partitions on a compact flash card, but also as whole disk images represented as normal files, one per virtual disk that you can easily copy, backup, store, and exchange. Also new for the CFFA 3000 is Disk 2 emulation. You can use disk images from any Apple II operating system, including some copy-protected games. You can back up your real disks to virtual image files, and then copy the disk images to the CFFA 3000 to run just like they did before, just without the floppy disk. Here's a tour of the card. This is the main read-write LED. It'll blink when the card is busy. There's a bank of configuration switches on the card, but you don't really need to mess with them. They've got a handy legend on the back if you need to look one up. Then there's the slot for the compact flash card and the USB port. Note that you can plug in a USB thumb drive directly, or you can use any of a number of other adapters like extension cords or multi-card readers. So let's get started and see the CFFA 3000 in action. So we'll start by plugging the CFFA 3000 into slot 7 of an Apple IIe. That's the traditional slot that a hard drive controller goes into. You can pick any slot you want for the most part. Some machines will restrict you from using slot 3, so to keep it traditional we'll just use slot 7. Remember Apple's ProDOS has the ability to use one or more hard drives of up to 32 megabytes in size. We'll start by taking a virtual hard drive image with ProDOS already on it and set up the CFFA 3000 to boot from it. We can basically use any USB stick or compact flash card we have available. Plug it into a host computer, drag any hard drive image to it, and eject it back out. The disk image we'll use here is a backup of the one that shipped with the original CFFA card. Now we plug the USB stick into the CFFA 3000 and turn the Apple II on. We'll quickly hit the M key to get to the configuration menu. Since this is a hard drive image, we'll select Smart Port. Our image is on the USB stick, and it shows in the File Chooser menu here. Hit Return to select it for inclusion, and we're done. Leaving the menus, we'll automatically boot and we can see it start up. You have fine-grained control of exactly which disk image will appear on which slots and drives, but for simplicity, we're just sticking with the defaults here. Note, too, that you can do all these same operations with a compact flash card as well as the USB stick. You can even have both of them in the card at the same time. Using the CFFA 3000 as a hard drive is great, but one of the cool new features of the card is to allow it to emulate a standard floppy drive controller with floppy disks. The great thing about this is that you can use virtual disk images from the internet, or disks you already own, but without ever having to copy them back to physical floppies again. You're using the real Apple II hardware, so it's better than emulation, but your floppies won't ever wear out. The concept is the same as for hard drive images. You just need to copy the floppy images to the USB stick. We'll get into the CFFA 3000 configuration by hitting the M key on boot up, invoking the CFFA 3000 menu. Here, we'll tell the CFFA to configure floppy disk as the traditional slot 6. Then, select the disk configuration, pick the image we want to insert, and hit return. We back out of the menus and reboot. The virtual disk and the virtual drive will then boot up just as if it were a real floppy disk. The CFFA 3000 opens up a bunch of new possibilities for backing up your physical and virtual disks. For example, you could configure your card to host the virtual disk 2 in slot 7 and then have a real disk 2 in slot 6. That way, you could use any disk 2 copy software to copy from slot 6 to slot 7 and you'd be making a virtual backup of the physical disk. Back on the modern computer, 
backing up your virtual images is as simple as dragging the virtual image files to the main file system for safekeeping. The same technique works for either floppy or hard disks on the Apple II end. That's it for this brief introduction. We've just scratched the surface of this very flexible and powerful card. The CFFA 3000 has new capabilities of hosting virtual disk images of any shape, size, or operating system for the Apple II. It has the ability to substitute contemporary silicon storage for aging magnetic technologies. For a computer approaching its 35th birthday, the CFFA 3000 is as future-proof as it gets in this industry. Thanks for watching. Visit drare.net for more information.